How's it going, people? This is Reaper, aka Noob Entertainment, and here I am back. I know that you guys haven't seen a video from myself in quite a little bit of time, I guess. Uh, it's been about a week. The only reason for that is because for some reason or another, I have downloaded a freaking mega virus that I haven't been able to remove with, like, anything. I've tried uh, malware, I've tried AVG, I've tried anti, uh, what is, uh, malware bites. I I've tried, like, uh, Hitman Pro, I've tried everything. And this fucking thing has not been able to be removed. Uh, I found where it is. I can probably remove it myself in the registry keys, but I don't want to mess with that just yet. I have a couple of hopes up my sleeve. But with that being said, guys, um, the only reason why I haven't released any videos is mainly because of that. Okay, guys, so at this point, for no reason at all, my microphone decided to cut off on me. I have an adapter. That's why sometimes it has a little hissy noise. And what happened is all this area just became silent. So I'm going to try my best to recap what I was trying to talk to you guys right at this area. And I don't want to use the other microphone. I know it sounds a little more echoey and far away. So I'm going to do my best to try to speak louder. And I don't want to use it because I don't trust it not doing the exact same thing. And then it becomes quiet all over again. So I'm sorry about that. But anyway, what matters is we are breaking down this video. This is not my video. Let me disclose that very, very clearly. This is not my video. This is Zero's content. And I'm going to be breaking down his gameplay between himself and MVD. And I believe this was after Japan, if not MVG Sandstorm. So he's at the very top of his gameplay. So let's see what we can learn from Master Zero himself, the top player. And uh, let's do our best to do that. There's a lot of great videos out there that do a very good job of learning fundamentals and stuff like that. Uh, shout outs to number one, Rush Hour Smash. They do a very good job of that. And uh, there's another good uh, option out there. Let's see. My Smash Corner is another good YouTube channel that you guys should definitely check out if you guys are trying to become a little bit more competitive in this game. And these guys, they're awesome at what they do. And they teach you great stuff. But here's my attempt at doing exactly the same and try to break down what's going on here in the heads of these top players. And we will call this the Noob Theory. So let's go ahead and see what we can do and try to figure it out if we could uh, here on this video. And yet again, uh, shout outs to Rush Hour Smash and shout outs to My Smash Corner. If you guys have not checked them out, you should definitely should do that immediately. And um, I do hang out in their streams, by the way. And uh, especially Rush Hour Smash, I am subscribed to them and they're great people and they've definitely earned my subscription. Other than that guys, I do want to tell you guys that I am going to be never, I will never stop YouTubing, I will never stop streaming. So uh, even though I've taken quite some time to release this video, I'm hoping that you guys like this idea and please let me know by hitting that like button and uh, hopefully there will be more. But other than that, let's go ahead and get right on to this video and uh, yeah. Okay guys, so here we are. I started the game for you guys to watch. I allowed for it to just roll on a natural basis. Uh, there may be a little bit of frame lag due to the fact that my X split for some reason or another just doesn't take it very well. So I apologize if you do see that, but nonetheless you can see the match. I will be linking the video to Ciro uh, himself so you guys can see it if you need to. Other than that, uh, at this point I was letting it roll. And yet again, I want to disclose this is not my content, this is Zero's video in his channel. I'm only watching it for learning purposes uh, because we're total noobs out here and not all of us necessarily understand all the technicalities of Smash. So we're trying to learn as best we can from the masters themselves. Uh, so I'm letting it roll. There's a few seconds left. Just let it do that. And then I will try to do my best because yet again, guys, my uh, microphone cut off. So I'm going to try to do my best. All this is muted. Uh, so that I can recap what I was thinking at the time to do uh, the analysis. Let's see. Another thing was, guys, at the ending of this video, I was planning or wanted to deliver the main message of what we could learn or what we've learned from this video. But since I didn't do that due to the fact that I found out it was muted, uh, I ended the video abruptly. But maybe I can do that in one of the muted sections to break it down for you guys. So at this point, the video has stopped. I decided to go backwards and said, okay, we've seen enough. Uh, yet again, I will be linking it in case you guys need to see it. And uh, right here is where we start making that analysis. Okay. So I decided to rewind it for some reason. It appears we missed the very, very beginning. And we want to see what they go for and why. 
and here it is it's just about there okay I rewinded it one last time here we go okay so I press play the go starts off and right here I break it down telling you guys that look they're already going right at each other um, they decided to go for a perfect distance right here they stop right about here is the perfect distance that they need to be between each other in case this guy decides to go offensive and zero de decides to go defensive or offensive himself uh, so right now I've just noticed that what they did was rush at each other be at the distance they prefer I pause the video and I see that back and forward between them two one of them is being or deciding to be at the perfect distance so that in case the other person decides to be offensive or defensive he can be defensive or defensive uh, with the proper decision between each other and also right now I try to break it down in such a way that I describe the positioning that they are even though the go is right in their faces and it does not allow for people to see each other uh, what they're doing is basically finding out the perfect and optimal space between each other and as you can tell the go is still in the way and yet these guys are totally on the offensive and that's exactly what a player does they keep the pressure up 100% of the time it is literally less than a second in as you can tell by the timer look at the timer and yet they are still in the positions that they need to be so that they can create the optimal amount of pressure between each other and uh, it appears that what I'm trying to tell you guys right now because yet again this is a pre-recorded commentary due to the fact that it was muted uh, is that they are at the perfect positioning that they prefer from each other and it allows for them as soon as they go to that little circle area right there where that go is I do point that out very very soon but basically right when they're right there that is when he feels he is the most comfortable to engage in an offensive option but what he's trying to do at least zero is uh, trying to keep them at the distance they prefer and then as soon as they are right in that circle area then that's when they go offensive or defensive between each other uh, when per when people are close to you they are probably closer than they appear it is a lot like that mirror guys in this game when an offensive player or a person who's like very very good at this game is close to you he's probably closer than you than than you think uh, the reason for that is is because they keep that distance that you see between each other and as soon as they have an option between uh, being offensive or defensive depending on what the other person does they respond to that they close the gap and then they go offensive after they seen you uh, commit to a move that probably wasn't your best option uh, but nonetheless they do make it happen okay guys so this part happens to not be muted so let's see what I had to say they were in the air and they decided to just keep the distance that they have and they at least MVD has fall fallen or fast dropped to an offensive option as you can see he's starting to tilt something that I feel it's not going to be punished too much if he decides uh, that that being zero if zero decides to go offensive or defensive because he can actually just move back yet again the spacing is optimal you, you don't see them completely in your face right now which is probably the best thing to do against a top player. Maybe you can get away with that with people on Four Glory, or maybe your you know good friend that you can pommel every day on an average basis. But I'm thinking that because these guys respect each other's space, this is how top players do and will always play. And maybe it'll work against those people, like I said. But that's actually a bad habit if you're going to be facing a top player. So let's go ahead and press play yet again. Let's try to break the frame a little bit slower than this okay Lucina still on the defensive basically doing what I've explained earlier getting close enough to see him go offensive which is the first thing he did and yet he is still not ready to engage neither taking a hit nor going for a hit which only yet again tells me that what he's trying to do is bait out uh, his slip up until he can see a perfect opportunity where there's lags in his move and he can come in with a couple of combos and capitalize get that damage in but right now it is an even ground and zero still appears to be a little bit on the baby slash defensive side there it is exactly what he wanted oh my god I'm glad I am learning guys and you are learning with me he did have an defensive uh, position here and decided to fast fall as soon as he saw the middle in the middle of his move 
he saw it just uh, release... What is this? The um, I think it's the special? Release the special move. And as soon as... In the middle of it, he was already like, okay, he just released it. I need a move now. He dropped. He got as close as he could. And now he's ready for an offensive option. I'm thinking maybe a tilt in case he decides to roll backwards or something like that. Well, let's see what happens. Grab. It was a grab. Okay, so maybe he wants to capitalize yet again. Grabbing is a great option. Uh, another option for the grab was because he could probably uh, have, how do you say, predicted a shield. He probably could have predicted a shield, and the reason why he went for a grab instead of for, like, damage was probably for that. And also, at a zero percentage, it is probably the best thing to do. Uh, to grab the person, try to capitalize damage, instead of just using a tilt, which would only push them away and make them a little more defensive. Let's press play. Grabs, down throw, yet again, probably the best option of the grabs for the majority of combo starters. Let's see what he goes for afterward. Okay, so he grabs him, he knows where he's gonna go, he's in mid of animation, there's nothing he can do, decides to go towards him. Jumps here, instead of right under him which is probably another reason why people do this. Yet again, it's the spacing, guys. The reason they do that and to stay at a respectable space between each other is so that if they decide to go offensive, they're good. They can move backwards if they decide to go defensive because this guy puts on pressure. It's not a big deal. He can move backwards. Or if he does slip up or he sees, because he's very quick about it, um, that he slips up in any shape, way, or form, or he's in mid-animation, being in this area, yet again, is perfect because he doesn't have to commit, he goes in for an offensive option if he does need to. There it is, and he only hits with the tip of the hitbox, which, yet again, is probably what you want to do with Marth and Lucina, but, nonetheless, with most characters, this is how you play Charizard, this is how you play Ganondorf, this is how you play Marth and Lucina. This is how you play a lot of characters that don't necessarily... Okay, guys, so at that point, my microphone did cut off. Uh, but what I was saying is that that's how you play these characters. And they don't necessarily have a lot of fast action uh, to their moves. They don't necessarily come out of like a frame one or anything like that. So to compensate for this is when they are getting closer to you, you got to meet them halfway and release those hits earlier than most people would like to, uh, such as my own mainer, Greninja, uh, Mega Man has a couple of those moves that come out of like in frame 3, uh, let's see, Little Mac, all those characters, I mean, if they're close by, they have no problem just releasing those moves immediately, but people like Ganondorf, Charizard, Lucina, and Marth, they like to take advantage of the fact that you're a little bit far away from them, but before actually getting in your face, they release their moves beforehand to meet you halfway and hit you with a hitbox before you can actually get that close to them. Once they've decided or to commit to you know the momentum that they have towards you or that you are going coming towards them and you have momentum and you're about to get hit by the hitbox if they release it earlier. That's what I was saying. Uh, they are compensating for that. With that being said, this part is muted, so I'm going to take advantage of another thing that I wanted to do. I did end the video abruptly, so I'm going to break it down right now. Uh, this whole video tells you guys about spacing. And that's the main thing that I learned just the other day. I fought against a 0 to 80 comboing Luigi, but after a few games and playing the guy, I beat him 2 out of 3 on 4 Glory. And yes, they're 4 Glory players, but he was not a bad player himself. So I was very astonished, if you will, because I was pummeling people left and right, but this person taught me a very valuable lesson. And I even got to mention it to Nairo since I was hanging out in a stream. Another great person you guys should actually watch. And that's another way to get you guys level uh, to increase here in this game. By watching great players, which is what we're doing here. But we're actually breaking it down frame per frame in the analyses. Uh, with that being said, what happened was playing with this player uh, with a 0-80 to 80 combo, I realized what the main thing he was doing was keeping me at an optimal distance. Not too far not too close, but just within reach, that if he needed to, after I mess up, he would go in with a couple of, like, he would throw a fireball, and then he'd grab me, and then he'd capitalize. So what I needed to do was basically never stop moving. 
And the reason why I now see a lot of top players do that, that never stop moving, was because when they short hop, they move backwards, they move forward, he never has the opportunity to completely understand or read my movements or where I'm going to go. So I decided to do that a lot more, and I was easier at baiting out what he thought would be a move but instead was a short hop or I was going backwards and then I'd capitalize myself that is the main valuable lesson I want to teach you guys here the spacing there's two parts to that number one never stop moving go backwards go forward jump I don't know do the Macarena do whatever you have to do but do not allow this person to completely understand where you're gonna be at all times because if you stand still that's what they do they keep you at the distance they want not too far not too close just right you know the Goldilocks zone don't let them have you in the Goldilocks zone guys get them out of the way get them uncomfortable even boxers do that for a reason keep moving that's the first part the second part is bait out those things don't necessarily go for a long laggy move like a smash move don't throw them out just cuz they will punish that go for small moves go for a grab when you've baited them out and they think that they can go for a defensive option like counter or shield once you've baited out these moves from them that you see them always going for that's what you want to see for uh, try to bait that particular move that, oh, if they're, if they're spamming, spamming counter uh, get close to them thinking, thinking that you're gonna hit them they counter, then you grab, then you combo. So then you, what you want to do, yet again, is bait these things out. Again, this part is no longer muted. I'm going to allow it play, uh, to play. I'm sorry about that little mic uh, hissing noise, guys. That is my adapter, and I apologize. Anyway, let's see. Uh, he decides to throw him down to see what kind of st combo starters he has for zero. Let's see what he goes for yet again. Okay, so he grabs him downwards, throws him out. Uh, he has a pretty considerable distance at this point. I'm not sure what he wants to go for, uh, but he did go for something immediately after that. Maybe it's something he already decided he had wanted to do before doing uh, before doing the throw. Okay, so maybe he imagined that Zero would actually be right above him, or try to when he did hit uh, and threw him downwards. He imagined that he would be right here when he was able to release his move. But that did not happen, so basically he tried to grab him, throw him downwards, in the middle of that animation, although he may know that he goes all the way out here, he was expecting him to release his own move right here. So it was a combo starter, but probably not well executed, and uh, I hate to say that from a top player, but that is what happened. Let's go ahead and see and what else happened. Let's go ahead and press play. Uh, okay, so he's still in the middle of the animation. Try to fix my mic, guys. Once this is extra annoying. There you go. Uh, so there we go. He is back on the ground. Zero has decided he is in the most vulnerable of spots and has gone towards him. Let's play. Grabs down throw again. Probably the best option. Now that he okay, I wasn't able to get that spot, and I don't want to rewind it because we're going to go way back in frame. But he did grab him downwards. He saw that he went backwards and immediately went for an offensive option yet again hits with the tip but only did it after he was at the right space because if he did it here he could still hit him but yet again he would be most vulnerable uh, he waited just a little bit for him to go beyond him uh, it wasn't necessarily at the tip of the tipper but it was close enough where he says he is vulnerable there's nothing he can do anyway let me just go ahead and capitalize right about here uh, when he decided to hit him downwards it went all the way out here he could have hit him when he was at this angle he could have hit it when it was over here. He waited right this way. And the reason why he did it in this particular area instead of like a little bit further was because in his mind, he's thinking, I need to capitalize now before he decides to out out of the animation in some way, shape, or form, or even dodge. So he did it at the right spot, in my opinion. Let's keep pressing play. Maybe it's just me as a noob, uh, trusting Master Zero. And how do you say? Uh, being a completely biased that I know with the, that I know what it is he is doing, but yet again, he does. So let's go ahead and press play one more time. And at the end of this video, I'm going to try to also tell you guys what I think we can take from this video the most from the analysis as well as the video in the gameplay itself. So I'm going to try yet again, tell you guys what have we learned at the ending of this video. And we're almost done here. The majority that I want to do, we're all 23 seconds, is probably maybe max a minute, and I'm going to try to make it roll a little faster because the video may be getting a little long. Let's go ahead and press play. 
Okay, yet again, the spacing is right where they like to be, at least for zero standards. I'm not sure about MBD. He continues that while they're falling. He could go backwards, he can fast fall, but he keeps that distance for an offensive slash defensive option. Let's see what MVD does. Let's go at MVD's uh, standpoint. Let's see what he thinks at the point. He goes for that offensive option yet again, the right space. MVD gets hit. Let's see what he goes for when he gets hit. Uh, at this point, I, in my opinion, would try to get away or try to dodge. Let's see what he does. He just keeps getting away. Okay, jumps forward. Zero catches onto that and goes backwards just to keep that space so he doesn't go completely above him. And he doesn't like to be in the spot that he doesn't like to be in. Okay, so at that point he saw, okay, so I know where he's going. I've already guessed his trajectory. I've decided to go this way myself and immediately go for an offensive option, realizing that MVD doesn't necessarily know that because he's down here, he's actually closer than he appears. Uh, watch out, objects and opponents in Super Smash are always closer than they appear. As you can see, what he did was he was waiting right here, saw that he was going this way, uh, pretty sure that he committed to it, decided to go for a jump right here, Go for an offensive, turn around, and go for a forward, uh, forward air, a fair, I guess you could say, yeah, fair. So he went for the fair, right about here, after deciding he's committed, he's going this way, jump, turn around, fair, which means I go back to that area where I like to attack from, right about this distance, but because he thought he was safe and was recovering at this point, and Zero caught on to that, saw the trajectory he committed to, jumped, he still didn't realize, okay, well, he's right there, but then he turns around and goes for an offensive option, catching him midway to his own recovery. Yet again, if we were supposed to go under MVD's uh, thought process, but it appears that Zero is still teaching us a thing or two, so that's important to point out. Okay, so he gets hit, still goes to, okay, he goes towards him, which I was thinking, why would he be doing that? Yet again, it was because he had a plan, realized that Zero committed, to going on the offensive and has a great chance of pulling off a, either a fair, this looks like a fair to me, but then again it might have been a counter. I might have missed it but I'm thinking it was a counter because he did go towards him and that's the first thing I was thinking in my head, yeah, he went for a counter. So I'm thinking yes, he went for the counter realizing that Zero had committed to his offensive options and he was gonna go in for a recovery and or entry back to the stage but was gonna do it with a counter himself. Step up to Ikea, people, we do have counters. Anyway, that's a bad joke. Let's go ahead and press play, guys. And now he is where he likes to be. He has finally recovered and is a better standpoint. Now what he has to do is realize where Zero is going to go, what he's going to commit to, and when to come in for a punish, if not be at a, defensive, uh, at a defensive point. Because he was doing that for the majority of the fight. Right now, he has an option to go to an offense himself. Will he take it? Uh, will he see the opportunity, or will he have to go back to defense? Because he is back on stage, he does have the upper hand of the opponent. Okay, so he decides to go downwards for one particular reason, and my, that, my guess, is he goes here because he is at the perfect distance where he likes to commit to a, an offensive option, which means he, if he gets out of the way instead, instead of going for anything himself, he's playing it safe, he jumps, he can probably commit to that offensive option he's trying to bait out, which is the reason he did this, and he can then after, at a safe standpoint, go for the offensive that he's been looking for all this time. Oh, and on the way back, which was a great option, which is what I broke down just now, he also realized, hey, in case he does do this, even if he doesn't, this is not going to be punished, I can do a down air, and he can probably get hit if he does the recovery. And, which is a great option, yet again, it was still for the first part of the analysis, and the second part was, if that didn't completely catch off his bait, and he went for that offensive option, this was his offensive response, but at the same time, it was more of a, I'm only trying to bait it out, but in case he does do it, here I, here's my offense, but if he doesn't, it's still a defensive thing, in case I am recovering and he comes at me, uh, the tip is going to hit him, but I'm only trying to recover to then thereafter go for an actual offense, which we know that's not much of an option anyway. It's only going to do a few damage and give him better positioning. 
which is what he really wants so that he can actually go in for that proper offense and capitalize. Let's go ahead and press play. Yet again, I'm only going to be breaking it down to probably a minute. It's only 30 seconds in. Let's try to uh, make this a little speedier. I know I have a lot to say, but I am a noob and I try to do my best at what, I, what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and continue. So he does do, but finally commits to the recovery, the up B, but does it after realizing what MVD would do, which is another thing that I see a lot of top players uh, do. They don't necessarily, because they are pressured to get back on stage, as long as they have the ability to get back within their distance that they know that they can recover, uh, they don't necessarily always commit to their recovery immediately. They wait for C to see what the uh, aggressor at the point is doing so that they can recover properly without getting uh, hit in any sort of offensive option that they may have. Let's, let's keep playing. Uh, Jesus. Let's keep pressing play at this point. I'm running out of breath and sometimes I mess up. I apologize. Let's go ahead and press play. And MVD is at the right spot. Decides to go for an offensive option himself. He feels naturally um, safe to go for it. Uh, Zero did not respond to that, which is a great catch because this is an offbeat to what MVD has been doing lately. Most of the time he had been a little bit more on the safe side. Maybe Zero got a little too comfortable and didn't realize that MVD was ready for an offensive option and he capitalizes on it nonetheless. Goes for a fair in case he goes after him. Yet again, just because he's down here, this is actually what Zero wants. He doesn't necessarily want to commit to a recovery just yet. But so long as he has a jump, he's going to be okay and he's going to be able to recover. Let's see that jump. Well, it was just a recovery. That's all he needed. He may have missed that recovery uh, jump. Uh, I may have missed the recovery jump when he was trying to get back on. He might have already done it. Uh, I skipped a few frames there. It's not a big deal. Let's continue for the rest of the match. So they went behind each other and he's charged a smash after he saw he was completely vulnerable yet again because he had committed a couple of things. He baited out right here, went behind him, smashed which is what I was able to catch really quickly. He goes after him, goes backwards to the defensive option after MVD properly commits to exactly what he baited out for. Yet again, uh, I'm going to break down why they do this so much at the end of the video. Goes downwards fast fall because he knows he's already ready to go onto the ledge. Uh, doesn't come into anything too bad other than just a little tilt that can give them spacing but they're right around this area where they always seem to be for the majority of this match let's continue jumps in case he goes for an aerial instead he's trying to stop his options at this point he sees that he's committed and he's done it in the floor fast falls into a smash okay this is the perfect option for MVD MVD finally getting the read on this and deciding to go for a defensive option and shielding, which is nothing that is not going to be any, uh, in any sort of way punished. Immediately opts out of the shield so that he can act out of it, because this was a perfect shielding moment. Grabs down air more, more than likely. Down air? No. Down smash. Or down grab, I'm sorry. Uh, so he did decide to pummel him at least twice, because that's the majority count, or magic number count. For the majority of people who do grab you, they can easily do in two little hits after the grab but after that if the person is mashing the controller correctly they will be able to get released so he did capitalize a little bit of damage and then decides to go if I'm guessing correctly and if I'm reading what they're doing so far a down grab so let's see it there it is and uh, he is now ready to he's done a small tilt a small tilt a small short hop so that he can continue his assault but not necessarily going for a full hop which allows for him to have a proper distance in case he decides to go offensive. So let's see what happens. Short hop yet again, keeping that perfect distance between each other. Let's see what Zero responds with. A dodge. Apparently he did feel as if though he was in a commit right about here. Yet again, I said, if your opponent is close, he's probably closer than he appears. It is very deceptive because at this point, he's only done a short hop. He's got another hop. He can easily uh, go for fair, uh, back air. Uh, jump yet again, have a better spacing, and then attack one more time. Not to mention right now, uh, Zero has caught on to that, probably committed to this. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but he decided to dodge. Let's see if MVD decides to, because he did bait it out, and here it is. He's going to be vulnerable right after these frames, and let's see if he capitalizes and how he does it. 
Okay, he only falls down, continuing to have that spacing that he likes. The dodge is still in, and there he is. He finally commits to his offensive option, realizing he has done the dodge that he wanted. He baited it out. Zero is completely vulnerable. And he was just out of reach. Um, the spacing wasn't necessarily where, where he needed it to be. Maybe Zero DI'd uh, to the best of his ability and was able to escape the tipper. Which is probably the reason why he was trying to keep that distance. He was a little bit further than maybe he'd prefer. But it was probably on purpose. Yet again, he's playing Mark. Let's press play. He goes behind him. He waits right here. Then fast falls. Okay. To go for an offensive option, he grabs. Pommels at least twice. Grabs downward. Does a fair in case he decides to cover for no reason at all. Fast falls. Has that spacing. If he is doing this and has committed to it, it's probably because he thinks either A, I can bait this, or he's already decided to go for that offense uh, that he could have gone for afterward if he had baited it. But let's see what he goes for. He only fast falls and continues to do so to bait it out. Okay. And he recovers, still has that spacing. Look at the perfect spacing they always, always have. Okay, press play. Goes for that fair finally, which is what he wanted to do after the bait, which he did commit to an offense right after that. Uh, he was out of it for like two frames or three frames maybe, and he was able to capitalize regardless. The spacing. He recovers. At this point, he has optimal choices. Yet again, one more bait. Goes out. He does the counter. He recovers. And let's see if he needs to bait again or goes for an offensive option. Apparently, he doesn't recover. And at this point, he is going to capitalize. He does the fair. Goes and recovers. Doesn't necessarily need to get back on stage. He wants to continue to punish the opponent off stage. He has some off game, off stage game, and wants to capitalize yet again. Zero trying to uh, when he goes for the offense, get as much damage as he can. Tries to challenge his own stamina in the combos and tries to go for it over as many times as he can possibly pull off. At this point, he can probably afford it, especially if you have an extra stock. Do not be afraid to chase your opponent off stage. It is probably the best option because, yet again, if you are those people who struggles to finish off a kill after having a lot of damage on your opponent, what you probably should be doing a lot more, especially if you have like Sheik or even sometimes my own Greninja struggles at a high percent damage after having those people at a kill percent, uh, to be able to get them off and actually get that stock off of them and kill them. The reason for that is because sometimes maybe it is a good option to chase them off the stage, challenge their recovery, and make them not be able to come back by either pummeling them over, gimping them, or completely, you know, like uh, hitting them in such a way that they're too close to the knockback actually made them get off stage altogether, which is something he is trying at this point. He is at a kill percentage. Let's see what happens. Fast falls, recovers, which is both a recovery, but mostly the offensive option, uh, since he is ho totally vulnerable in the position that he was in. Look at look at where he went. He was from here. The position is optimal for this recovery. It goes right up the butthole. <laughs> so let's continue. Wow, but MVD responds. He saw that coming. He knows that he has to recover. Great response by MVD. He finally gets a good read on him. Decides to jump upwards, and this is Marth, but it's not Brawl Marth, but it is Marth nonetheless. Gives him the tipper with the dare. Let's see how Zero decides to respond to this. Can he possibly tech it? No, sorry! And that's finally a stock off from one of the two characters. And even though MVD all this time was suffering from reads by Zero and the baitings that he had, he decided to commit to something that was probably the most... Uh, how do you say, capitalizing, and I keep saying that word, but capitalizing from all of the matchups and faceoffs that they've had so far in this match, and that's due to the fact that he realized what he had committed to, and he has an off game, not off game, yet again, an off stage game. Guys, this whole time, Zero was giving him damage, and that's great and all, and he can still capitalize on that later, but the fact that MVD had an off stage game, and even though it was just one hit, look what this did for him. This is why it is so important to chase your opponent off stage. You can earn you can earn an early kill and an early stock off if you are brave enough, and especially if you have an extra stock that you can totally afford to do this, 
go off stage, challenge their opponent, look what happens. Total payoff. This is exactly why you should, if anything more than on stage, you should have a better off game stage. Because that will always trump your opponent. Look what happened. With that being said, 10 more seconds, let's break it down. He does a taunt, he, da he damn well deserves it. Zero not liking that very much, coming at him. Decides to do a grab for no reason at all. I'm thinking maybe he thought he was just going to come at him. He did slowly walk up to him. Uh, the spacing would be optimal. He decides to go for a jump. He's pro uh, I thought he would go for an offensive option and hitting him downwards there. That's something I would in, uh, in that position. But he decides to continue to go away. He likes to play very, very, uh, how do you say, not defensively, but like uh, very smart. He's trying to wait for the perfect opportunity. He doesn't want to risk. That's the word. He doesn't want to risk a lot. So he's playing non-risky. Continues to do a double jump, I think it was. And then he goes for a back air or fair at that point. Just to commit uh, to an offense that will allow him, even if he does uh, go for an offensive option, because of the spacing that they have, when he, went, when he committed to his offensive option right here, He's actually quite safe. He can go backwards, be defensive, or continue the pommel if it turns out he wins. And the animation was a little too early. Zero now has an option to go for a fair. He does take it. Now he's at a defensive. The spacing, did you see that? When he jumped, he didn't necessarily completely get into his face. He jumped, got close, then came backwards just to keep the same space that he'd like to have. Fast falls after he sees he goes uh, and tries to recover to the stage grabs because he realizes he can easily go for something like uh, a defensive option like a counter or a shield and the best option instead of going for a quick offense at that point is probably to bait out that he's going to go for that and instead go for a grab which is what he does pommels at least once grabs him off the stage at this point he is at a kill percentage he's no longer doing downwards it is not the best idea to do it at that point it's not low percentage anymore Goes for it, yet again, gets close enough to where he thinks he can commit, goes backwards, there's the bait, the master baiter. <laughs> the master baiter, <laughs> the master baiter uh, himself, that's two words guys, the master baiter zero himself. That's, <laughs> that's so, so funny, I'm sorry about that guys. Let's go ahead and press play. The, 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 the game is almost over here, the, the little noob analysis analysis game is almost over here guys so let's go ahead and continue the last frames and he goes for a fair gets him off stage yet again this distance he does commit to something he sees that he's still fast falling getting that distance right where he needs to be probably gonna recover at this point he decides to go for his final hop as you can see this whole time he still had another hop on him another jump the second jump he, got, he decides to go for the fair thinking he's gonna go recover doesn't necessarily happen at this point MVD just dodges I think he does that recovery which was what he was expecting recovers at this point to the stage we're just gonna keep pressing the play button until um, zero finally takes off his stock and we'll end the uh, match there and then I will tell you guys what I think about this match rolls tries to grab him just gets right out of the way Gives him the tipper just enough because he sees he's committed to that. Turns around only enough just to have the distance of the tipper and capitalizes on that. Runs right after him. The only reason he did that little backwards air thing was because he keeps having the habit. He wants to continue the habit of what he's doing correctly. So he just did that out of habit. The tilt just to keep him away in case he does try to get onto the stage the, the uh, proper way. Grabs, because he finally gets onto the stage, he realizes when he did it. Comes at him again. Instead of going right at him or grabbing him, which is what he wanted to respond with himself, MVD, that being, Zero decides to stop right in front of him, right at the perfect distance where he likes, and tries to give him the tip, I'm guessing? If not, this is the special, the shield breaker. The shield breaker it is, and at this point, because he's at the edge, right where he needs him to be, he realized this is the moment to pull off this special that has so much great knockback, and I'm pretty sure it is stuck right here. Good game by both of them, not to mention, Zero has kept it at a 0%, keeping the pressure on him, baiting him the right way, and then deciding to finally get the stock off and capitalize one last time. Not necessarily the kill yet, it wasn't strong enough, he didn't charge it. In my opinion, I thought it was. 
uh, but the knockback wasn't strong. But then decides to go off stage with the off game, the, yet again, the off stage game. Jumping off, finding him at the right position that he needs him to be, and then just going for that fair. There it is. The fact that he decided to challenge him off stage again between these two stocks that were taken up by these top, top players was because they challenged each other off stage. Not on stage, off stage. Let me say that one more time. The two stocks that came off of these two top players by both of them either being defensive him or Zero being defensive himself. Uh, it was taken away from him and from him off stage. And when they did it, Zero himself to take it away from MVD and MVD vice versa, it was when they were being defensive yet again off stage. So there we go. We finally have a breakdown, at least a minute and 17 seconds. I'm hoping you guys find this a little bit useful. Let's go ahead and press play to see what happens. Let's see that stock. There it is. He recovers. Okay, guys. Well, that's enough. At this point, guys, I have done my best at a noob stance to break down the video uh, to try to help out any and everybody out there that doesn't necessarily do this or just hasn't had the time or doesn't want to or hasn't even tried. Uh, but I think there's a lot to learn from a video uh, from top players, especially if we break it down this way. Even if I don't necessarily know a lot about the gameplay and the way Smash should, uh, should be played and stuff like that. And even, how do you say, I'm sorry about this guys, there's a dog barking in the background. But I have given it my best shot and I know there's a lot of things that I need to learn myself. And I know there's a lot of terminology that I don't necessarily know, um, like teching and different things like that and how they work but I try my best yet again this has been Reaper AK Neob Entertainment uh, I am 100% back into this I am gonna keep bringing you guys more gameplay of myself I'm gonna keep giving you guys stuff like this if you guys like this video please hit that like button uh, give a comment in the comment section below let's go ahead and learn from the master zero himself the masturbator uh, and go ahead and let's have a discussion about what's going on in this match and give me your two cents your own analysis and let's try to get better let's level up i am a greninja give me them rare candies let's level up with that being said guys yet again this has been reaper aka noob entertainment uh i will be bringing more content in the near future guys i am 100 back yet again thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day